Laney High School in Wilmington, North Carolina, the birthplace of the career of what many consider to be the greatest basketball player that has ever lived. Now, the school and its basketball team wear its influence proudly. The Jordan logo almost consumes the campus, which you would expect given the prominence of his most famous former student. However, with everything Michael Jordan gave to this place as a player, and has been able to give back to it since, there's one thing he never brought back to Wilmington. You see, the player that is nearly synonymous with the word champion in the basketball world, whose championship accolades have transcended sports trivia and have now entered into the realm of common knowledge, an NCAA national champion at UNC, former NCAA player of the year, 14-time NBA All-Star, six-time NBA champion, six-time NBA Finals MVP, five-time league MVP, has one accomplishment that is and always will be missing from his career. My name is Tucker, this is Sporting Logically, and this is the untold story of Michael Jordan's high school basketball career. As a sophomore at Laney in 1979, Michael Jordan was only five foot nine. In one of the most consistently misquoted pieces of sports history ever, he did actually play for Laney as a sophomore, only he had to do so on the junior varsity team. The varsity team returned 11 seniors and four juniors from the previous season, which left only one spot for an underclassman on the roster. The player picked in front of the future Hall of Famer was six foot seven sophomore forward Leroy Smith, who went on to have a successful basketball career of his own at UNC Charlotte as well as professionally in Europe. Clearly upset, Jordan went on to put up multiple 40-plus point games on the JV team that season, but the varsity coaching staff never considered moving him up at any point with the team already loaded with upperclassmen. As a junior, with 11 players graduated from the previous season, Jordan quickly became the team's leader, scoring 35 points in his first varsity game en route to an extremely productive season. This caught the attention of UNC's Dean Smith, who made recruiting Jordan a priority and was able to sign the future Hall of Famer before his senior season. However, Jordan's junior season didn't end exactly the way he wanted it to, as Laney managed just 35 points as a team in a five-point loss against Southern Wayne in the second round of the North Carolina Division II high school basketball playoffs. Heading into his senior season, Jordan had every high school basketball player's dream. He had already signed and committed to a high major school, so he was able to play freely and without worrying about the future. He was clearly the leader of his team, and with him in charge, they looked to be strong contenders for the state championship. Jordan averaged 26.8 points per game as a senior, and his team only lost three games in the entire regular season. They headed into the playoffs looking like the team to beat in Eastern North Carolina. On February 25th, 1981, Michael Jordan and the Laney Buccaneers faced off against the New Hanover Wildcats in the second round of the North Carolina Division II high school basketball playoffs in what would be the final game of Michael Jordan's high school basketball career. The two teams were very familiar with each other, with New Hanover being right down the street in Wilmington as well, and the two teams having faced each other twice during the regular season. Laney had won both of the previous contests, but both were closely contested games. Ultimately, New Hanover pulled off a 56-52 upset to end Jordan's high school basketball career without a state championship. The coach of New Hanover was quoted as saying that the Laney coach could have played Jordan inside and won a state championship, but he didn't. All he was concerned about was, how can I best prepare him for college? As we all know, this would be one of a small handful of championship disappointments that Michael Jordan would experience in his legendary career. However, with that being said, it is incredible to think of all the players in the history of North Carolina high school basketball that can call themselves state champions, and one of the greatest champions that the sport has ever known isn't one of them. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Sporting Logically. My name is Tucker. If you liked the video, please be sure to leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see more videos just like this each and every week, be sure to subscribe as well. Thanks, and I will see all you guys next time.